Hi everyone, I'm Nicole, STEM X Stitch. Today is February 19th, 2023, and this is floss tube number six. As of today, I have stitched 156,249 stitches since I started stitching in 2020, and I have stitched 1,849 stitches since my last video. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm excited to give you just a little update on how um, my stitching has gone over the last week and also spend a little bit of time talking about how I track my stitching. I've gotten a few questions about that and I know it's kind of a, a thing I emphasize a lot uh, on my channel is like the data and um, keeping track of all of that, the data that I like to share, um, to keep for myself and share with you all. Um, and that's kind of how I've incorporated my like STEM mindedness into my hobby of cross stitching. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit more of an insight into my overall tracking process. But anyway, let's start with what I've been working on this week. Um, I don't have any new finishes or any new fully finishes. I also don't have any new starts. And again, I've only worked on one whip this week. It's the same whip as last week. A Night Spirit Studios Unexpected Visitors. I'll add in a picture here of what the finished pattern looks like. It's gorgeous and I am making really good progress on this one. Um, so without further ado, I suppose here's where I am on this piece so far. Um, and let me move it over to the side so that I can also put in a picture here of where I was last week when I showed it to you. You can see the pro progress that I made over the last week. All right, so this project, I've been just super enjoying working on it. Um, I am now at 58.25%. Um, so if you were here last week, I was saying that my WIPCO goal for this project for this month, um, or for this call, I suppose, uh, was originally 33%. Um, but I was really enjoying working on it and I felt like I could do more than that this month. So I wanted to update my WIPCO goal and change it to 50%. So I have done that. Um, and I've also now hit my 50% goal. So I have completed 40, uh, 4,545 stitches out of 7,803, putting me at, again, 58.24%. Um, so I think I'm going to stop spending so much time working on this one. I, again, this week, like this was, I, I had planned differently, which I'll talk about later, but this week, um, this was my best project and my evening stitching. I only worked on it, so it was any time I was going to stitch, I was stitching on this. I was just really, really enjoying it, um, especially with like the border. The border on this piece is like pretty chunky. It has, you know, probably like close to half the stitching is just like in this rectangular border and these little corner pieces, um, which I have not finished yet. They're all like filled in with black. Um, and I was really enjoying that. I was just in a color blocky mood. I just wanted to pick up a whole long strand of thread and just like stitch a straight line of stitches and not have to think and not have to look at my pattern. I was super enjoying that. And then I decided I would tr uh, try out this little lacy portion that's on the outside so I could get a better idea of the entire border. Um, and I really like how it's turning out. So I'm doing this one um, one over one on 28 count natural um, linen by... Um, uh, I don't know what, I don't know, natural linen. Um, so you can see the stitches are pretty tiny. Let me see how close I can get you and still have it focus. I'm not, not really sure what, what my focusing capabilities are. So hopefully you can see that. Um, and I chose to not use the called for DMC, but instead convert to my own palette of Threadworks flosses. They match the original called for, which was like black, white, and red pretty much. Um, I just wanted to try something new and I'm really enjoying it. So I started this on January 30th, 2023. And by now I have worked on it for, let's see, uh, 21 stitching days. So 21 stitching days has gotten me to about 58% complete. Um, I'm going to, I guess, 
transitioning into plans a little bit, I'm going to stop stitching on this one in the evenings because I have another whip go goal that I need to meet. And I'm going to keep this as my bus project likely for the rest of the month um, and just see how far I can get. And then um, since it was originally on my whip go board three times, um, let me pop my whip go board up here. Um, it was originally on my whip go board three times uh, each for uh, like a third of the progress so that I would get a finish with, uh, by the end of the year. Instead, I've now switched it, to, um, hopefully you can see, to uh, only take up two spots, each one for 50%. Already knocked that goal out of the park for this month um, and will um, hopefully easily accomplish a finish when it gets called next. And then I cleared up a space which I filled in with a different pattern, um, which I can't remember the designer that it's from, but when it, it gets called, you'll see it. Um, it's a yellow and brown moth, so another addition to my butterfly wall that I'm working on. So that's where my Whipco board stands uh, right now. And you can see that I've accomplished three out of the four calls for this year so far. That one that's in light gray is to get to 10% on my Heaven and Earth Designs Hidden Harbor. And I need to finish that by the end of this month. So I definitely need to pivot away from working on unexpected visitors for now. Last week I said that I was going to switch and work on unexpected visitors as a bus project only and then pick my hay back up and I didn't end up doing that. I don't know, it's fine. I, I break plans sometimes. Um, it's not too serious to me. Uh, I just wanna hit those goals, but I also wanna work on things that I'm enjoying at the time. So I didn't pick up my hay last week. I'm My plan, um, we'll see, is to start back up on my hay this evening with my evening stitching and then have that be my evening project through the end of the month, which will hopefully, hopefully take me to 10% complete on that one. So I'll hit both my whip go goals. Um, if for some magical reason I hit both of my whip go goals and I feel like starting a new project. I have also been, um, I've been thinking about stitching a tiny version of a pattern that I've stitched before for my parents and my sister. Um, so I can put in the pattern that I've stitched before here real quick. It's a, a just a head of a miniature schnauzer, um, which is the dog that I grew up with. Um, it looks really similar to him. Um, and I, I stitched that both for my parents and for my sister when my dog passed away. Um, oh, I've somehow magically ch <laughs> changed the angle on my camera. Whoa. So this picture looks a lot like my childhood dog. Um, and I kind of want one for myself now. When I stitched this for my family, I did it in, um, I did it two over one on 18 count and it turned out, I think it was in like a five or six inch hoop. I think I want to make a really tiny version and put it in one of those like small two by three frames that you can get from Michaels. So I'm planning to stitch it one over one on um, 25 or 28 count and put it in one of those little frames. So if I am feeling like the mood strikes me, I might start that, but I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, and again, like I said, I I make general plans. I try not to hold myself to my cross stitching plans too much because I don't want this hobby to start to feel like a chore or a requirement for me to do something in particular. Um, I find that WhipGo helps me structure my goals, but I don't normally feel like it forces me to do something and um, I'm also like, uh, I definitely take Jesse Marie, who created Whipgo's um, comment of your board, your choice, um, to heart. I, I do what I want with my board. If I get a call a certain month and it really doesn't work for me, I'm not too harsh on myself and I give myself the choice to maybe switch to squares on my board and work on something else that month and come back to that call um, a different time when it gets called. So um, I try not to put too much pressure on those plans. So you'll probably hear me do this multiple times where I say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do this next week. And then I come back and I'm like, well, actually I didn't really do that. I did something else. 
um, and I think that's totally fine. I'm a very like organized, plan-focused person in most other aspects of my life, so it's nice to have a little bit of freedom freedom to um, stitch what I want when I want. Sweet wee, I think is what people say. Stitch what I want when I want um, to some extent when it comes to cross stitching and my hobbies. Alrighty, so those were my plans. Um, I haven't purchased anything since uh, last week. All right, so I think now I'll transition to talking about how I track my cross stitching. Um, and I do this kind of in three different ways. Um, actually, I think I do this in four different ways. So I'm gonna share with you all of the different kinds of mechanisms that I use to keep track of my cross stitching at any given time. The first is Pattern Keeper. <laughs> so if I have any big pattern, honestly any pattern that I'm able to, um, I always try, if it's a digital pattern, to load it onto Pattern Keeper on my tablet. Um, and I find Pattern Keeper, oh, I don't wanna update Pattern Keeper right now. <laughs> okay, um, I find Pattern Keeper to be a really, really great tool. Um, because there's a couple things that I really like to track about my stitching that I wouldn't be able to do very easily without Pattern Keeper. The first is um, the number of stitches uh, that I've stitched in a specific day, which I don't write down at this point, but it's like kind of nice to know when you're in the moment, like, oh, how much have I gotten done today in this last like two hours I've been sitting here stitching? Um, yeah, again, I haven't decided to actually track the number of stitches I stitch per day, um, but I'll, I'll get to my daily tracking in a minute. The other thing that Pattern Keeper allows you to track that I really like is the percent of the pattern that you have completed. Um, so the total number of stitches in the pattern and the total number of stitches that you've completed so that you get that percentage. Um, and I really like that because most of my stitching goals, especially in terms of WhipGo, are based on a percent complete rather than something like a page completion or anything like that. Um, so I find Pattern Keeper to be super helpful. It's nice to have all my patterns in one place. It's amazing to be able to search for symbols. That's a big perk, in my opinion, of digital patterns that are Pattern Keeper compatible. Um, and those additional statistics are really nice and I, I like them a lot. What I use for daily cross-stitch tracking is, again, uh, at this point I don't track the number of stitches I stitch each day, but I do track... Um, on paper, I track the, um, let's see here, I track which projects I work on each day um, just by filling in a square for that day. And so you can see here that like for the last two weeks I've only worked on unexpected visitors. Um, and then at the end of the month I have some additional statistics that I add at the bottom of the page. So you can see some of the statistics that I've um, added to January here. Um, things like the total number of stitches I've stitched in that month, um, the number of days I stitched, new starts and finishes and things like that. So I do a little bit of on paper tracking in that way. This helps me get, um, get an idea of a couple statistics that I really am interested in. One is the number of days that I've um, stitched on any particular project. Um, so for example, I can tell you that like for me to finish Amazon Angel Butterfly, it took me a total of eight stitching days. Or for me to get to X percentage on this project, it's taken me this many stitching days. It lets me know how many days um, in a month I don't stitch at all, which I think is interesting. And then um, it also helps me remember to write down my start and finish dates for certain projects. So I've been enjoying having this as a like physical daily stitch tracker. I just started this this year, um, but it's been working pretty well for me. The other thing I have is on my phone. Um, let me, I guess I also have it on my laptop since I have a Mac <laughs> and it has notes on it. So let me start up my screen recording and we'll pop you over to my laptop so that you can get a, a sense again of how I track things digitally. 
All right, so now you're looking at my computer screen, which has my notes app, which I see both, I can see both on my computer and on my phone. Um, and there's a couple things that I keep track of here, um, just so that I can have easy access to them at any time. Um, the first is any like recent finishes, especially things that I haven't fully finished. Um, and then whatever projects I currently have in progress, categorized by how big those projects are. And then I like to keep uh, a note of my current project uh, progress on them. And this one is not up to date, so let's update it. So I'm not super religious about updating these statistics here, um, but I like to be able to look at my projects on a glance, especially on my phone if I'm not somewhere where I can just pull my laptop out um, and take a more deep look into like the Excel sheet that I'll show you in a minute. So this is, um, and this is also how I was originally tracking all of my stitching. I used to only keep track of it in my notes app. Um, I didn't have any spreadsheets. I didn't have any physical daily trackers or anything like that. So I've just kind of pared down my tracking in my notes now um, and moved some of the tracking that I used to do over to other areas where I can be more um, precise about the things that I'm tracking and more detailed. I also have a couple other lists in here. Um, there's some planning, so here's where I keep, that's not how you spell February, here's where I keep my monthly plans. Um, so I note down like what my WIPGO calls are for that month and if I have anything else I'm hoping to work on, oftentimes those are best projects, um, things that I do when I'm commuting. And then I also keep a little note of things that I need to buy. Um, I actually just made a purchase for some Q-Snap extenders forgot to mention that in my purchase section, but it's not here yet, so did I really buy it yet if it's not here? Um, so that is complete. And then I also have a couple of random notes here of like some projects that I'm interested in starting but aren't like a specific pattern that I've picked out yet. I have a note that I've been keeping of patterns that I want to design or some ideas for designs. I'm not going to show you that because I want to keep it a little bit of a secret right now. Um, and then I also have a note where I keep my ideas for floss tube videos. Um, also not going to show you that. You'll have to keep, you'll have to subscribe to see what I'm going to film next. And then lastly, I keep my floss tube notes here. So you can see my notes for this video, what I'm going to say in my intro, things I don't want to forget to, um, to share, and then like a list of things I have to do, which some of these I'm already doing. So um, that's so that I don't forget to do all of the correct editing for the videos and that I, so I don't forget to share things that I've been wanting to share with you guys. All right, so let's get rid of these notes and let's take a look at my cross stitch tracking instead. So this is a giant Excel spreadsheet that I made starting 2023. And I had to go back and do a lot of um, kind of cataloging of old projects that I that I had done and not kept all of these details for and needed to, to remember. So I track a few things here. Um, this is my master tab where I have everything I've ever stitched since I started stitching in 2020. And you can see for each entry, I share the pattern name, I mark down the designer, and the total finished stitch count if it has one. Some of these are embroidery projects so they don't have one. Um, I also note down the fabric so that I know if I'm using Ada or Evenweave or whatever. Again, for embroidery projects this is like some cotton fabric so I didn't bother noting it down. I also note down the um, count for the fabric. Uh, the floss that I used, especially if it's like something um, that I that isn't just DMC or um, especially if I've not not used the charted flosses. And then I note down the stitch type. So one over one, two over two, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, if it's full cross or half cross, and then of course if it's some different type of stitching like embroidery or black work, um, satin stitch, something like that. I also like to note who I made each of the patterns for. 
Um, so you'll see, I make a lot of things for myself. I try not to give away all of my stitching because I really, really enjoy looking at it and I like to stitch for myself too, but I have given quite a few away as gifts. Um, and then I note down my start and finish dates. You'll see that for most of this, um, that just means a year because I didn't used to track that. But more recently, I started tracking the actual day and month that I started each piece. Um, so I have more detailed data there. Again, stitching days is something that I didn't use to track, but now I know how many days I worked on each project. Um, and when I say days I worked on each project, the literal only requirement is that I pick it up and put at least one stitch into it. Um, the max being that I start and finish it in one day, right? So this is kind of an arbitrary note, but I think it's interesting to have. Um, and then I also mark down how I finished it. Um, this one, oh, I never finished this project. I never fully finished this. So um, some of them I finish in hoops, a lot of them I finish in hoops. I personally really like how it looks, plus it's a super easy way to finish. So it's a no brainer for me for any pattern that looks nice in a circular format. But some of them I also pop into tiny frames um, or I have made a few into flat folds as well. And then the last thing is if I've taken a nice photo of that project and if I have posted it to my Instagram. And so I finally recently caught up on taking photos and posting photos of everything I have ever completed to date. Um, you'll see that some of these have like a dash in them. That's because they're projects that I stitched more than once that I didn't want to um, didn't want to post a picture of more than once because it was basically the same thing. Um, but anyway, if you're curious about seeing pictures of everything that I've ever stitched, you can either check me out on Instagram at stemxstitch, or you can take a look at a um, video which I will put in the, um, well, in the cards here, here, I always get confused, um, of my Lifetime Finish Parade where I show you every project I've ever worked on. Alrighty, and then coming down to the bottom, so um, over here like is the end of everything I've ever completely finished. And then I have a different section for the in-progress things. This has basically basically all of the same categories, except for it doesn't have like finish, number of stitching days, um, fully finished, and like the photos and things like that. Um, I also add in to the pattern name the total stitch count, so like for Elegant Lace, the total stitch count is 19,369, so that when I have my stitches done in this, um, this, th this is the number of stitches I've completed on the piece so far, I can always figure out pretty easily what percent complete I am um, on any given piece. And then lastly, I have total number of stitches that I've ever stitched. Um, just by summing up that column. Of course, there's no way for me to take into account things that were like embroidery, satin stitch, etc. And I also um, generalize this, so I count a half stitch and a full cross stitch as the same thing um, because it's easier that way. I don't want to bother, bother with that. Um, so those are a couple of caveats for this total stitch count that I tell you in the beginning of all of my videos. And then I also keep a note of what my total stitch count was at the last time of the filming of the last video and since the end of the previous month so that I have these values of numbers I've stitched since the last video and in the last month. So this is my main stitching tracker and I have a couple other tabs in this um, cross stitch tracker that I, I think I'll just share really quickly. The first is patterns that I've already purchased so that I can easily take a look and pick out a new pattern I might want to start. There's also patterns that I'm interested in purchasing but haven't purchased yet. Of course, there's a lot of them. And this isn't really all of them either. These are just ones that aren't easy to find on Etsy. Um, on Etsy, I have an entire favorites list of things that I want to stitch that I haven't stitched. Um, and I'm hoping to share some of these with you in another uh, in another video in the future. And then I also have this yearly stitching tracker, which is basically just the total stitches each month, and then I'll have 
kind of a bar graph and a line plot showing how those grow over this year. Since I didn't track that in 2020, I don't have those values. Instead, I just have which projects I worked on each month of last year and what my goat calls were and things like that. So that is all of my cross stitch tracking over all of my devices. Um, I'll pop you back over to the non-computer view now. I have some Q&A to share with y'all. Um, I got one question in the comments asking what an ORT was, and that's a very good question because I remember the first time I heard somebody say ORT and I was very confused at how I, I knew what they were talking about, right? Like, uh, and you may or may not know, but um, these are ORTs. <laughs> They're all the ends of the threads that you're left over with. So it's like, you know, you, you stitch a certain color and you either get to the end of the thread where there's you know, not enough le uh, of that color left to stitch anymore, and you finish the thread on the back and then you snip it off. Um, or maybe you stitch with a color and then you finish all the stitches of that color so you have a bit of a longer length and you snip that off and you don't, it's not worth saving to you or whatever, however your method is. And so those collectively are orts. Um, and I save my orts because, um, so I have <laughs> this like glass container just lives on my desk and then I also have this little wooden container um it says orts on it which I think is really cute um that my friend got me for Christmas um that I bring with me for my travel stitching so when I'm stitching on the bus um to collect my orts in as well um it's a nice small size for traveling and um, to get back to orts, so you know what an ort is now maybe, but why did it get called that? <laughs> um, and so there are a couple explanations that I've heard. Um, one is that it's like an acronym that stands for old ratty threads or odd random threads. Um, insert other adjectives here that work work in the acronym basically uh just like an acronym saying these are the leftover bits of thread the other um explanation i've heard is that it comes from um i think i think it was like old timey german language maybe where ort meant leftovers um and i don't know somehow that word made it into the needleworking community and got used for thread ends. I'm not sure. I don't think any there's any consensus on which of those is um, the truth or like the the actual um, or um, oh my gosh what's the word? The actual origin of the word ort but um, you know it gives some context to, to how that could have, have come into our language I suppose. Somebody else asked me, uh, can you use Pattern Keeper on a phone? Um, to which I answer, I think so. <laughs> I think the only requirements for Pattern Keeper is that you have a, a device that runs an Android operating system and that you have the Google Play Store on that device because you need to download Pattern Keeper from the Google Play Store and it's only compatible with Android um, OS right now. Though they have said, many times I believe or at least they say on their website that they're trying to make it compatible with um with iOS uh, or Mac OS or you know one of the Apple OS's uh so I think if you have an Android phone you could technically download and use Pattern Keeper on that phone I, that's why a lot of people I, I know a lot of people use it on tablets um, what I heard from a different user is that if you have a um, Mac or a iPhone or an iPad that you can download a different software called Markup XP or something. Uh, let me just check on that. And they said that it works pretty similarly to Pattern Keeper. Now I've never tried Mark, oh, it's called, so it's called uh, Markup R-XP. Um, again, I've never used this, but they said it works well. So if you're looking for a software that you can use for um, digitally 
marking your cross stitch patterns and you only have Apple devices, maybe give that a, a shot before you um, try to find a device that will run Pattern Keeper for you that you don't already own. And um, to, to build on that, in the past I have used an Android emulator on my Mac to use Pattern Keeper on my laptop. Um, and that worked really well for me for a while until I updated to the newest Mac OS. So that may or may not be something that could work for you on your Mac if you're curious um, and want to try it out. So those are some more thoughts on Pattern Keeper, Pattern Keeper alternatives, um, and the possibilities so that you can think and decide on what the best way for you to track your cross-stitching digitally might be. Okay, so uh, somebody else asked what video editor I used. Um, I am by no means an expert in video editing. I've barely even touched video editing prior to starting this um, channel. I think I used it to make one video for a communications project in undergrad and that's about it. So I'm not great at video editing but I can make do and because I have a Mac I've been using iMovie which is free on Mac so I haven't paid for any fancy editing software although I know that other people are partial to things um, like Final Cut Pro, um, which is paid for um, video editing software that you can get for Max. I'm sure it has features that, that iMovie doesn't provide that would be really nice to have, um, but I haven't felt like I have a too strong of a need for it at this point. Um, I'm making do with iMovie because I don't have $300 to spend on Final Cut Pro, it's pretty extensive. Um, but if you have any other recommendations for video editing software, um, I'd definitely be curious to hear um, what your recommendations are. Also, um, my biggest question is some YouTubers are, especially some floss tubers, are very uh, technologically advanced. And some of them, I think the one that comes to mind um, is Michelle Bundy Stitchy. She films her videos and in, I think in real time is able to be like, oh, and let me show you a picture of the pattern and like click it and it magically is like in her video that way. And she doesn't, maybe she doesn't have to go back and like edit that in, I'm not sure. Or maybe I'm making that up and she's, she just, it seems like it, but that's not actually how it is. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Um, so if you know how those cross stitchers, uh, those floss tubers might, or how I might be able to in real time click a button on my laptop, which sits in front of me when I'm filming um, and put in the pattern that I'm talking about so they don't have to spend an hour doing that after I film, I'd love to hear that. That would probably save me a lot of time and help me get videos out faster on my weekends. All right, so that's all the Q&A that I have for this week. If you have any questions for me that you want to hear answered in my videos or that you want answered in the comments, please drop them in the comments below. Um, I love chatting with all of you and seeing comments come in. It really makes my day to get all of your sweet messages and to be able to um, give you like my thoughts and opinions about your cross-stitching questions. So um, yeah, please leave those below if you have any. All right, so the last thing that I have to share today is just a couple um, a couple of life updates. I mentioned in my last video that um, there was going to be a science pitch night that I was hosting with the students um, in my science communication class. Um, that happened last Monday at a local brewery. It was a huge success. It honestly went better than I could have imagined. And it, it was really, really awesome to have pulled that off. Um, it's the first time that this event has been in person since um, the pandemic, and so it was really lovely to have everybody together, you know, in one space, in one room again. Um, there were probably over 50 people there, which I was blown away by. The, brew is, the brewery was a smaller one, so it was completely full. Um, we got great questions from the audience, and all of the all of the students in my class did an absolutely incredible job giving their pitches. I was so proud of them. Um, so that was super awesome. 
And I can't wait to go to the same event next year and I can't wait to hear these students give their longer talks in spring, which I'm sure you'll hear me talk about more again later. Um, I've also spent a bit of time this week fiddling around with a couple cross-stitch designs that I've been um, working on. So um, I don't have any concrete plans of a date for opening an Etsy shop right now and starting to share my designs, but I do have two designs that I'm pretty much done with that I think I would be like happy putting out there for the world to see right now. So I'm getting, you know, I'm inching closer to, um, to really getting that to be a concrete thing that exists in the world. So keep an eye out in the, you know, coming months, I think, for some stomach stitch designs if you're, if you're interested. And then lastly, this um, past weekend, actually today, um, is my boyfriend's birthday. So happy birthday to him. Um, and we spent a nice weekend together with friends, playing games, eating carrot cake, trying out some um, new restaurants around Seattle. It was a nice time. So those are a couple life updates for you. Um, I hope you're having a lovely weekend. I hope you have a the best week you can next week. And I hope you come back and join me for next week's video. Um, I will be giving another, you know, week in stitching update, week in stomach stitch update. Um, and I think in the next video, my, you know, little special segment in this one was, was my cross stitch tracking. I think next week, um, I will talk a little bit more about life as a PhD student. So if you're curious to hear, um, what it's like to be a PhD student at the University of Washington in bioengineering, kind of specific, um, or just learning a little bit more about what it's like to stay in academia into your mid to late twenties, um, come and join me for that video. Um, I hope to see you there and I will, um, I'll see you next week. Bye.